Founded in 2013 by Pete Lau and Carl Pei, OnePlus has become a leader in Android smartphones and innovation today. However, they haven't always been in such an elevated position. In fact, their early years were plagued by marketing failures, broken promises, and poor customer support. In this video, we'll be taking a look at where OnePlus started and how they've gotten to where they are now. This is a quick history lesson in OnePlus. Smashing into the Android tech headlines in 2014, OnePlus's first entry into the mobile market was the OnePlus One. The reason? OnePlus promised that this was a flagship killer. The device was packed with impressive specs for a surprisingly low price tag, starting at just $300. This was also before the days of OnePlus's own Oxygen OS, as the one shipped with Cyanogen OS, a community-maintained variant of the Android operating system. In order to keep demand under control, OnePlus implemented an invite-only system. The launch of the OnePlus One was not without controversy, however. First, OnePlus initiated a contest called Smash the Past, in which users were required to record a video of themselves smashing their current handsets. However, there was some confusion for some, as they ended up prematurely destroying their phones and posting the videos to YouTube. OnePlus changed the rules after this, only requiring a donation to Medic Mobile, a charity. The second controversy, or rather major marketing failure, was their Ladies First contest, which invited women to post photos of themselves either holding the OnePlus logo or having it drawn on their bodies and post to the forum. Other forum members would vote, and winners would receive a free device. It was a clearly sexist and generally ill-advised concept, and the outrage against the contest came quickly, and OnePlus shut it down. Barring these controversies, however, the OnePlus One was, generally speaking, a successful product. In 2015, OnePlus launched their second device, the OnePlus Two. One interesting thing about this product launch was the fact that it was launched via VR in Google Cardboard. Initially, the OnePlus Two was sold via the same invite system as the One, but the invite system was dropped later that year. Instead of launching with Cyanogen OS, OnePlus shipped the device with Oxygen OS, their own flavor of Android 5.1.1 Lollipop. Later, they updated the Two to Marshmallow. However, despite initially promising that the phone would receive an update for Android Nougat, they eventually broke the news that it was indeed not going to receive that 7.0 update. Later that year, OnePlus launched a second phone, the OnePlus X. This was their entry into the budget smartphone category, and while the OnePlus One and Two were already far cheaper than most high-end flagships, the X was set at a very low price point of $249 thanks to the last-gen tech. Unfortunately, the X wasn't very well received, and OnePlus abandoned the concept in subsequent generations. In 2016, the OnePlus 3 was announced at $349. This was the first metal unibody smartphone from OnePlus, and generally speaking, it was received well by the tech community thanks to its relatively low price point, but impressive spec sheet. In the fall, OnePlus surprised many with the launch of the 3T, the first of their T-series, no, not that T-series, devices. Being an incremental update, the 3T slightly improved on the already great experience of the 3. Perhaps due to Chinese superstition, OnePlus skipped the OnePlus 4 and jumped straight to the OnePlus 5 in 2017. It was again a great Android experience, this time for $479, however, despite its high rating from DxO, the camera experience was a bit lackluster. Following their new launch cadence, OnePlus again offered a refresh in the form of the OnePlus 5T, which sported a face unlock and a new 18x9 display aspect ratio. Featuring a pill notch and Android 8.1 Oreo, the OnePlus 6 marked the company's first release for 2018. Again, this was a fairly successful device, however, there were growing concerns of the ever-increasing price tags that OnePlus devices were launching with, a price tag of $529. In the fall, the 6T was released, as expected, with minimal improvements over the 6 from earlier that year. Finally, in 2019, we saw the launch of the OnePlus 7 and the 7 Pro. This was a clear jump into the very premium, very high-end flagship territory. No longer was OnePlus even really pretending that they were trying to keep costs down with this Pro device, costing $669. That was the job of the 7, however the marketing around it was very limited in the US, as a cheaper smaller phone was never released here. Late last year, the 7T and the 7T Pro were released, but in a reversal, only the cheaper 7T was offered in America. Both offered fairly minor improvements on the already excellent 7 Pro and 7. That brings us to today, as we eagerly await the launch of the new OnePlus 8 series. A few things have been announced, such as their new wireless charging technology, which will be the fastest on the market. A few renders have leaked as well, so we have a fairly clear picture of what the phones will look like. However, not everything has been fully announced yet, so we'll have to wait and see. You can be sure that we'll be getting our hands on and we'll be bringing you all content on the devices very soon, so make sure you're subscribed. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a thumbs up as that helps a lot. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the Android Police channel. If you'd like to subscribe to my personal channel as well, feel free to click on my face here. My name is Jackson Hayes, and this is Android Police.